Hello, you guys are gonna help me figure out which skateboard to get my, for my husband today. Which, man, this took basically the entire day in every class. It was ended up being a really meaty conversation. Um, lots of different things to discuss in terms of how can you actually figure out what you're gonna pay for something. But before we do that, a note on notation. Okay, on Tuesday, we developed an equation or we kind of analyzed an equation that let us say that the part was equal to the percent times the whole. And we mostly saw that if, for example, the percent was 30%, then you were setting up a fraction that you could use. So instead of 30%, you could say 30 out of 100, which would also be equivalent to 3 tenths. Either of those would work and saying, all right, that is the equation that we're going to use. Just want to remind you that you can also write a percent or a fraction as a decimal. And that is especially useful if you're going to be putting something into the calculator because working with that decimal might be simpler than trying to input a fraction into the calculator. In that case, we would have this. Three tenths or thirty hundredths would be what we would put in place of the 30%. One more example to look at that. Let's talk about 7%. Gotta love those single digits percents. If we have 7%, then you could write that as 7 hundredths, and that would be the same as 0 0.07, because you're going to end up in the hundredths place. Okay. So today, we had people who chose to work with fractions, people who chose to work with decimals. There was overwhelmingly a preference for fractions because since we're not using calculators, people found that multiplying across with the fractions was simpler than using the decimals. Absolutely fine. I prefer fractions to decimals because fractions are generally um, going to give you more exact answers overall, especially if you're talking about something like one third. So this is the situation. We have two different targets. They are both selling a skateboard that has the base price of $60. So if there were no sale, no tax, it would cost $60. But the target in Chicago has a 15% off sale, and then you need to pay 10% sales tax. The target in Cincinnati has a 30% off sale, but you need to pay a 25% tax. Okay, so they both started at $60. Question is, which of these is going to be a better deal? And when I took a vote on this, we had some people that said Chicago, only a few people who committed to Cincinnati, and then a lot of people who said that they thought this would actually be the same um, for both of them. And they had the interesting idea that if you had a 15% off and a 10% tax, that's 5% apart, just like if you had a 30% off and a 25% tax, it would be 5% off. So in fact, it's both the same because of this 5% idea. I pushed on this though. I said, okay, so you're, you're feeling like you should be able to add or subtract these percents, but is that actually going to work? And in order to figure that out, best way to do that would be to figure out the price of each, what's actually going to come out of your pocket, because then you know exactly what the better deal is. And then we could use that to either affirm or deny that idea that you can just combine those two percents to each other in this way. So, Long process, um, people you know, fairly quickly realized that we needed to talk about the sale price before we could apply the tax. Uh, some people said, you know, we go to the cash register, that's when they apply tax. Uh, I reminded people that you're probably not going to be asked to pay tax on something you haven't actually paid for. So if you're not paying all $60, why would they make you pay tax on all $60? So given that, it makes sense that we would try to find the sale price first, and then take it up to the cash register and find the tax. So in every class, it evolved, um, but we had something that was approximately, um, first people decided they wanted to find the sale. How many dollars off is it going to be? Then, how are they gonna use that to find the sale price? What you would be paying when you went up to the cash register? Then they decided, well, we need to figure out the tax. We don't know what the tax is, so we need to do that before we can add it on. 
And then last, we can add the tax to that sale price. And that's going to give us the actual cost to me, what's going to come out of my pocket. So we developed kind of a four-step way of thinking about this um, conundrum. And we could apply this process to both Chicago and Cincinnati. So I'm going to go through, I'm going to do it for both so that we can see the comparison. And I'm actually going to do it side by side so that you can see how the two are related. So we've got Chi-Town and we've got Cincy. Okay. So the first thing that I want to do is think about the sale. In Chicago, the sale is 15% off. Now, we had a lot of people that said that meant that they thought you were going to just pay 15%, but that's not what it's saying. It's saying it's 15% off, which means we're taking 15% away. You're going to have to pay whatever's left. Since it's 15% off, we might as well find that part. How much money is that going to be? $60 was the entire original price. Let's take 15% of that to take off of that $60. We decided, most people decided to use that part equals percent times whole equation since we're missing the part. So if we were going to say one, you would start with the, so sale equals percent times whole, um, which means our sale was 15%, which you could say is 15 one. 15 hundredths times 60, and we had people that said that would be the same as 60 over 1. And once you multiplied across, simplified, or simplified and then multiplied, however you got that, people ended up saying that this was going to be $9. And in this case, $9 is going to be what we are taking off of the original price. So now we can find the sale price given that. If our original was 60 and we're taking away $9, our new sale, our new price that is going to be what I expect to pay when I go to the cash register is $51. Pretty good deal. I saved almost $10. That's solid. But I do have to pay tax. Once again, the tax is going to be part of that price. I'm not going to pay more than that price. So I need to find 10% of that. So I can, again, think about the tax as my part, and that could be my percent times my whole. I have a new whole now because I'm talking about the $51 that I'm taking up to the cash register. So I could say 10% times 51, and that ended up being $5.10. And if I'm paying $5.10 in tax, and I'm also paying $51, so 51 is my base price, so that's my sale price. $5.10 is my tax. Then altogether, I am going to be paying $56.10. And that's going to be my total out-of-pocket cost. Cincinnati, similar situation. If we're talking that the sale is going to be the percent of the whole, in Cincinnati's case, the sale was 30% off of that $60, and that ended up being $18. Then to find the sales price, I would do my $60 take off the $18, that is my sale, and I'm going to end up with $42 as the new price that I need to pay. To find the tax on that $42, I would need to take my 10% of 42, and that ends up being $4.20. You notice if it's 10%, you can really just cut 42 divided by 10. Same with $51, 10% of that, divide it by 10. $5.10, $4.20, you've just divided your thing by 10 since it's 10% chunks. And given my $42, that's the sale price, plus my 
$4.20. That is my tax. I am going to end up with I did something wrong. I did I do wrong. Oh, excuse me. Yeah. Oh, it was a higher tax. I'm sorry. In Cincinnati, it is a 25% tax. I knew there was something weird about that. So if it's a 25% tax, you're going to end up paying $10.50. Take 42 and divide it by 4. So we now have $42 as my sale price plus my tax of $10.50. I'm going to end up with $52.50 as what's going to be coming out of my wallet. So they are not the same. That intuition that maybe we can just subtract did not end up holding. And I think the reason that people want to do that is because they look at it and say, oh, it's a number. It's 25%, so I can think of it as 25. It's not a number, though. It is relating a quantity to that percent. So if you have 25% of 60, 25% of 42, that is a different thing than just saying it's 25% altogether. So with problems like this, you can't necessarily just subtract percents from each other or add percents to each other. You need to think about how you're really going to be breaking it down and how it relates to whatever your whole is, because that's really going to have an impact there. There were two more problems on the blueprint that no class got a chance to look at, but those are some additional practice. We'll probably use those tomorrow as well. And actually, those might be on the homework quiz tomorrow, so something to look at. And then the practice, some of the questions ask you just to think about a sale or a discount. Some of the questions ask you to think about a tax. How much is your price going to increase after the tax? And then in a couple of them, I ask you to put these two things together like we did in class. Okay. Have a good night.